received um, a request to um, to to do a, a small video um, looking at lighting of um, zebra crossings, um, and the zebra crossings are uncontrolled. Um, <clears throat> they are for pedestrians to cross the road, and the idea is is that when a pedestrian is at the um, on the tactile paving, that the vehicles stop and allow the pedestrian to cross, and then they carry on. Um, so there's two approaches that we can have to to lighting crossings, um, and and this is broadly laid out in um, technical report number twelve or TR twelve, it's often called um, lighting of pedestrian crossings. It's it's published by the Institution of Lighting Professionals. Um, if you want to get a copy, um, if you go to the ilp.org.uk, go to resources at the top here, and then go to professional lighting guides on the left, and then scroll down to TR12, and then you can add it to the basket and, and purchase that using a credit card and so on and so forth, the price is on the screen. If you're an ILP member, you can um, log in and download a copy for your um, for your for your own personal use, and I'm I'm sure those of you that are members will will already be aware of that. So, <clears throat> I'm going to make reference to the methodologies used in this in that document um, and um, talk about how we set the grids up and so on and so forth in in lighting reality. So the first thing um, we need to do is to establish what the lighting level is on the road. This particular road has been lit to M4 um, and if we go to um, the overview of EN classes here you will see at the top that for um, an, M an M4 um, it's equivalent to a C4 or comparable to a C4 or comparable to a P2. So in this particular instance I've um, got an, uh, a 10 lux contour and a 3 lux contour uh, for convenience to, sh to show me where those levels are. So that part of the design has been done. So we need to set up the, the grid for the, um, for, the, uh, for the crossings itself. Um, so the first thing I do is I'm going to go to the calculation menu and select a new grid. That comes into the bottom right hand corner. I can then go through and redefine the location of that um, um, onto, the, um, onto the area of interest. So, um, generally as a rule, um, I normally recommend that we use a one and a half metre grid spacing um, on um, calculation areas, it, um, so something like that. Um, and um, this is an exception where I, I actually recommend something else. Let me just um, cut out the area of the crossing itself and something like that and one of the things that we um, we do when we light crossings um, is we we light it to um, three and a half times the approach lighting and 60 percent uniformity now if the grid spacings are at one and a half meters or less um, you're not going to get very many grid points on the crossing so what i tend to do is i tend to go to a half meter grid spacing um, or there or thereabouts. Um, by doing that you get a lot more calculation points on the actual carpet itself um, so you get a more um, a much better um, uh, answer in terms of uniformity. So in this particular case we'll be looking at lighting the crossing to three and a half times the approach lighting, so that's 35 lux and we would be um, looking at 60% um, uniformity across the, the carpet itself. Now, differing people interpret this in different ways. There's a couple of ways we can set the carpet out. The first way is, is that you can go to the tactiles, like so, um, or you can go to curb edge. The, the, the TR says um, the carpet, um, so you could generally go curb to curb, but do whichever way that um, is, is necessary. We'll go curb to curb in this case, um, like so. So I've set my carpet out. The next thing I need to do is to set up my, um, my vertical grids. Now, um, the way we... Um, the way we do this is we um, we would set up a vertical grid one and a half meters high, the width of the crossing, and three by three points. So I'm going to go to the top up here. I'm going to go select a new vertical grid. The grid has come into the bottom right hand corner, and I can then go through and specify the um, the position that I want that grid to go in. Now. 
again, different people do this in different ways. Um, I tend to um, use five grids. So I use a back of path on both sides, a front of path on both sides, and a center line grid. I'm not saying that's right, that's the way I do it. Um, set it up as um, three grids by three points by three points and um, now the thing that's really important when we do this is that you um, you look at the side that the um, the, the light is actually falling on um, and this is where the show direction arrow that's actually turned on in the top uh, toolbar here it actually comes into use and what you need to make sure is that that arrow is pointing towards the crossing so um, we can swap the active side by ticking this box here um, but make sure that the arrow is pointing towards the crossing I'll come back to the significance of that in a, in a, in a minute um, I can then go um, and I'm going to actually go use the um, the duplicate function on this um, so I'm going to go to duplicate I'm going to pick that one up and move that to there so that's my front of path grid I'm going to duplicate that for my center line grid so that's the center of the crossing um, I'm going to duplicate again so that's my um, front of path south and then duplicate again and we'll put that one there so all of these grids are the same same width so um, and then obviously we need to give them a name so grid 8 I'm going to call BOP for back of path um, south um, and I need to swap the active side. You can see on grid 8 how the arrow is pointing down. So if I swap the active side, it's now looking at going the other way. Grid 7, I need to do the same thing. I'm going to call that um, front of path um, south. Grid 6, I'm going to call that center. Oops. Um, Grid 5, I'm going to call that FOP North. And then grid 4, I'm going to call that BOP North. So I've got my grid set up. Um, so the back of path ones I've set up. The, the center one, um, again, we can swap the active side. Um, and what I tend to do is to uh, do set the um, lanterns up and then look at whichever one is the lowest one of the two values so that becomes the um, the dictating criteria so I can go back to my uh, lighting design I can then go um, add some columns in um, which would be somewhere about there rotate that around yep that looks fine I'm gonna go put that one there. So I'm assuming that these lanterns are actually going to go on top of the Belisha beacon pole so you would put your Belisha beacon pole black and white extend that up um, to six meters in this case and we can then go through and look at the um, the various results so I'm looking for 35 looks or better on the uh, on the carpet um, which I'm achieving and 60% uniformity which again I'm achieving the minimum over average um, and I then need to go through and look at the various grids. So on this particular grid, um, the I've got I'm looking for um, one and a half times the approach lighting. So that would be uh, 15 lux. Um, so I'm not quite achieving that there for whatever reason. Um, the curb edge I'll be looking for. Uh, Two, t uh, two times the approach lighting. Again, I'm not quite achieving that there. The center line, I will be looking at again two times. Now, this is where we can we can look at both sides of the grid. Um, and um, let's just go back into the grid dialog box. So, if I now swap the active side, you can see the results up here. If I swap the active side, there's not a great deal of interest. Very marginally, it's uh, for an observer looking looking south. Um, being the lower of the two um, and um, similarly there and similarly there now I just realized why none of this is working um, the grid height should be one and a half meters for each of your vertical grids which I forgot to add in before so I'm just going to go through and change each of those which I have now done
and then now we can go see if uh, it's now working. So still a bit low on that. Results look an awful lot better. Can't entirely remember where the poles were actually going on this. Um, <coughs> So that's how we um, we set up the calculation grid. Obviously, you would um, you would play around with um, with different optics, um, and um, look at a different lantern option to see if that could be improved. So we're going to go to a slightly higher wattage. Um, so that one now works. The uh, this being the front of path north, looking for two times, yep, that's working. Center, we're looking at two times, so looking for 20, I've got that there. Uh, I'm just going to go swap the active side and have a quick look. Yes, it's fine, so that is actually the lower of the two now. So that's now working. Looking for two times there, yes, that's fine. And I'm looking for one and a half times to the back of path, yes, that's working. And the carpet, I'm looking for 35 looks. If I'm honest, that's perhaps a little bit too high. Um, perhaps, yeah. Um, the thing to make sure that we do get right is the whether we have the left or the right distribution in the lantern and, and most um, manufacturers will produce a, a left and a right distribution. Um, this is obviously a two lane uh, carriageway so you have vehicles in the top lane going left to right and in the bottom lane going right to left. Um, if it was a one way street you would have a, a left aligned distribution up here and then a right aligned distribution here, obviously, if you're on the continent um, and you're traf you're travelling in this direction, you would need two right lanterns, not two left. So um, you'll have to forgive us for driving on the wrong side of the road. Um, hope you found that useful. If you have any questions, um, please drop us an email to support at lightingreality.com. If you have any further requests please again send us a request to support at lightingreality.com. Or lastly, you can tweet me at. Uh, at nicksmith1246 on Twitter. Thank you.